नमस्कार ओम एवरीवन इन दिस वीडियो आई शैल बी डिस्कसिंग द आईएपी नेशनल ट्रीटमेंट गाइडलाइंस ऑन द इमरजेंसी मैनेजमेंट ऑफ क्रूप और लैरिंगो ट्रेकियो ब्रोंकाइटिस व्हाट दिस वीडियो होल्ड्स इन स्टोर फॉर यू इज अ कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव कवरेज ऑफ द टॉपिक गिवन बाय द इंडियन एकेडमी ऑफ पीडियाट्रिक्स एंड दस इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एमडी एग्जिट एग्जाम्स एज वेल एज एडिशन ऑफ अ क्रूप स्कोर क्रूप स्कोर हैज बीन एडेड टू क्लासिफाई द सीवियरिटी ऑफ क्रूप एंड अ वर्ड अबाउट रेकरेंट क्रूप इज ऑल्सो मैंशन which may again be asked as a short note in your exams so watch the video till the end as it summarizes the key points at the end it is also known as acute laryngotracheal bronchitis it is a common childhood viral respiratory illness most cases of croup are mild and self limiting seen in up to 85% of cases occasionally 1 to 8% of cases may require hospitalization and in some cases it may lead to severe airway obstruction requirement of intubation ventilation and very rarely even death common viruses implicated in the etiopathogenesis of croup include para influenza viruses 1 and 3 other viruses such as influenza a and b adenovirus respiratory syncytial virus and meta pneumovirus inflammation and obstruction of the upper airway especially the subglottic area which is the narrowest part of the pediatric airway this results in sudden onset of barking cough inspiratory stridor hoarseness and respiratory distress which are hallmarks of this illness it is generally seen in autumn and winter seasons most common age group involved is 6 months to 3 years and most commonly the male gender is affected There is a prodrome of mild upper respiratory tract infection which includes non-specific cough, coryza and low grade fever. This is followed by sudden onset seal like barking cough often associated with inspiratory stridor and hoarseness. A mild wheeze may be present and if it is present obviously it will indicate lower airway involvement and in that case the disease, the patient might be known to the patient can be called to have been suffering from wallery or wheeze associated low respiratory infection the severity of symptoms varies over time and tends to worsen at night the risk factors for severe croup severe croup include a pre existing congenital or acquired upper airway narrowing for example down syndrome and subglottic stenosis any previous admission with severe croup and any underlying chronic lung disease congenital heart disease neuromuscular disease or any other reason for immunodeficiency which predisposes the child to acquire this infection common differential diagnosis of croup include epiglottitis bacterial tracheitis retropharyngeal or parapharyngeal abscess angioedema and foreign body back epiglottitis is characterized by acute onset dysphagia or difficulty feeding along with drooling of saliva toxic appearance and muffled voice bacteria bacterial tracheitis is again characterized by barking cough as in croup but along with this there is respiratory distress and the patient can deteriorate rapidly because directly the trachea is involved retropharyngeal abscess is characterized by drooling neck pain or torticollis dysphagia and odynophagia that is painful swallowing angioedema is characterized by rapid onset of stridor wheezing or dysphagia and possible cutaneous allergic signs such as urticarial rash foreign body is characterized by sudden onset choking episodes wheezing even hoarseness biphasic stridor dyspnea and decreased air entry so the first two causes are the causes which are generally first three causes are the causes which are generally associated with fever and therefore they are infectious causes whereas the remaining two that is angioedema and foreign body are non infectious causes and are not associated with generally not associated with fever unless and until there is super added bacterial infection there are certain red flag signs when alternative diagnosis must be considered these are for example when the onset of cough is very sudden within minutes for example in that case you must suspect foreign body if there is high grade fever or toxic appearance like in bacterial infection like bacterial tracheitis biphasic prolonged or recurrent stridor as in the case of for radio lucent foreign body prominent wheezing or rails when it suggests lower respiratory infection 
drooling, difficulty swallowing, trismus and torticollis which is suggestive of retropharyngeal abscess, facial or neck swelling which suggests parapharyngeal abscess, skin rash, erythema and shock which suggests of certain bacterial infections and age below 3 months which is uncommon for the development of croup. Poor response to treatment is a very important red flag sign because croup responds dramatically to steroids. Assessment of the severity of airway obstruction can be done by the Wesley Croup score. Croup is a disease of the upper airway and gas exchange in the alveoli is generally unaffected. Therefore, low SpO2 or hypoxia is a late sign and if this is present, present it indicates life-threatening croup. The loudness of strider per se is not a good indicator of the severity of obstruction because soft strider in the presence of a worsening clinical picture may be suggestive of an imminent airway obstruction and respiratory failure. So it is not the loudness which is important. Now this is what the Wesley group score is. Here they have taken certain clinical parameters on the basis of which they assign a score and then classify the group into severity levels. Now if the level of consciousness is normal including normal sleep, the assigned score is 0. If the child is disoriented, he gets a score of 5. If strider is not there, score 0 with agitation 1 and at rest 2, no retractions 0, mild retractions 1, moderate retractions 2 and severe retractions 3. Again, this is a subjective variation. Normal air entry 0, decreased air entry 1, markedly decreased air entry is 2. No cyanosis is 0 with agitation is 4 and at rest is, is equal to group score of 5. So finally mild group if is said it is said that the group is mild if the total score is less than or equal to 2 group is moderate if the score is between 3 to 7 it is severe if the score is between 8 to 11 and there is impending respiratory failure if the group score or the Wesley score is more than or equal to 12. Group is essentially a clinical diagnosis and hence investigations are rarely of any value. X-ray may be warranted if the diagnosis is uncertain and in group a classical steeple sign secondary to glottic and subglottic narrowing as seen in the picture. It may be seen and this is the picture of a steeple actually this you can see what the steeple sign means. It is actually the top of a tower or temple. But the sensitivity and the specificity of the steeple sign is not very good. Besides nasopharyngeal aspirates, viral cultures, rapid antigen testing and blood investigations are not routinely recommended. Complete and differential blood counts and C-reactive protein may help distinguish from bacterial causes of striders like bacterial tracheitis wherever they are required. Children with croup should be kept calm and de-stressing distressing procedures should be kept to a minimum as agitation may worsen with airway obstruction when the child is crying. The treatment is determined by severity of airway obstruction and is given by this algorithm. Like after the initial management, you assess the patient for the Wesley score and classify him as mild or moderate and severe or life-threatening. But irrespective of the category to which the group has been assigned, you have to administer the same treatment. That is, you have to give dexamethasone, intramuscular or oral, prednisolone and you may also use budesonide nebulization. Along with this, you have to use adrenaline nebulization. If the child remains stable, then you observe and then you consider for discharge after, the, after there is complete improvement. But in case there is poor response, you repeat adrenaline nebulization, admit the child to PICU, observe and if at all the worsening is there, you ha you'll have to consider tracheostomy or you'll have to go for intubation. But if the child continues to be stable, you may shift him in the ward and then finally discharge the patient after educating the parents. Corticosteroids act by reducing airway inflammation and edema. The corticosteroid of choice to be used in group is dexamethasone. Both intramuscular and oral routes have, been, have demonstrated efficacy. Concomitant use of inhaled budesonide is generally not have, has not generally been found beneficial. 
and the dose of dexamethasone is 0.6 mg per kg administered as a single dose the in our practice we have been used we have been using dexamethasone for 2 to 3 days in patients with group rather 3 days in patients with group adrenaline nebulization is done because adrenaline ameliorates manifestations of groups in patients via arterial arteriolar vasoconstriction it is recommended for moderate to severe manifestations is associated with reduction in necessity for both intubation and tracheostomy procedures it is administered in synergy with corticosteroids due to its rapid onset yet transient duration of action in contrast to corticosteroids Resimic epinephrine is not readily available in India therefore nebulized 1 is to 1000 form of L epinephrine is given at dose of 0.5 ml per kg maximum of 5 ml supportive care in the form of antipyretic agents are concurrently administered to mitigate pyrexia and there is no role of antibiotics or short acting beta agonists indications of hospitalization include severe croup with decreased air entry in chest and altered sensorium persistent or deteriorating work of breathing despite treatment with corticosteroid and nebulization nebulized epinephrine in the emergency department clinical suspicion of other conditions like epiglottitis bacterial tracheitis or retropharyngeal abscess which will require a course of antibiotics group in a young infant less than 6 months of age because generally it group does not manifest in this age group presence of other comorbid conditions like severe dehydration or sepsis which would warrant admission and treatment life threatening episodes are very rare less than 1% they warrant urgent measures to secure the airway there might be a risk of severe neurological impairment or cardiorespiratory failure if the obstruction continues unabated that is why it has to be managed aggressively endotracheal intubation should be done by preferably an experienced personnel a smaller size et tube may have to be used because of tracheal edema and not the one which is which we definitely employ after using the formula emergency tracheostomy set must be kept ready the criteria for discharge from the emergency department includes no strider at rest tachypnea or intercostal retractions normal heart rate temperature after having been observed for some time and no other indications for hospitalization now recurrent croup is two or more episodes of croup per year underlying etiologies are heterogeneous glottic subglottic or tracheal pathologies are typically assumed to be the most common causes of recurrent croup recurrent croup is generally associated with airway abnormalities and it needs proper evaluation including bronchoscopy but the presence of asthma allergies and gastroesophageal reflux disease they are also potential causes of recurrent croup so besides recurrent croup bronchoscopic evaluation should also be done in children less than 3 years of age who have a history of endotracheal intubation if they are presenting with recurrent if they are presenting with croup for the first time key learning points in the end include the following it is one of the most common causes of strider in children and it is a clinical diagnosis management is determined by the severity of airway obstruction for which iip has given a score known as wesley's group score minimize distressing procedures because we don't want the to agitate the child because agitating the child would make him cry and crying would increase the obstruction further systemic corticosteroids are the mainstay and in addition nebulized epinephrine also improves the symptoms because of a shorter duration rapid onset of action and recurrent croup is generally associated with airway abnormalities and does need appropriate evaluation including bronchoscopy So thank you so very much for a very patient listening and watching and please do give a thumbs up if you consider the video to be of benefit to you and I would like to know what drugs do you find useful in the management of croup in your own clinical practice so do comment in the comment section below thank you so much once again thanks a lot